Peter Archeel, the Lord, Abba Father, has shown mercy on Tom St. George. He has suffered enough on earth, it is time for him to be blessed. Go now and bless him. Thompson has obtained mercy from God, it is a must for him to be blessed. I'll go now to bless Thompson. He will soon forget that he has once suffered. He will become rich. Thompson's time has come to be able blessed man. Hallelujah to the Most High. To him be all the glory. No. I will not allow him to be blessed. I'll make sure I stop this blessings. I can't stand him being blessed. I must make sure I block this blessing. Thompson must remain poor forever. I must swing into action immediately. I am Barakil, the Archangel of Blessing. Today, I'm ready to bless Thompson. Today shall mark the end of your suffer in life. I am ready to bless you. Young man, I insist that you're the one that stole my wallet. I left it right on that table. Madam, nothing can ever make me steal your wallet. I may not have, but I'll never steal. Please, stop accusing me. We are in public. Stop telling me what I know. I insist that you are the one that stole my wallet. I'll have you arrested this minute. It is either you allow this grocery store guard search you or I'll have you arrested immediately. You thief. You look like someone who will steal, poor man. Did you just call me thief and poor man? Do your worse. Did you just raise your voice at me? Do you know who I am? Who are you? You mannerless lady. You are an idiot. Ah, oh, you slapped me? You must be a fool to call me that. I'm ready to deal with you today. This will serve as a lesson to wealthy people who think they can oppress someone. No. I do not dwell where there's anger. I'll postpone this blessing. Thompson, because of this anger, I'll postpone your blessings to another day. Thompson, I'll always hinder you from getting blessed. This is just the beginning. You will never get blessed. I will never allow you. I will torment you more with the spirit of anger and my other devices. The angel of blessing will never locate you or be able to bless you. I will never take nonsense from anybody. The fact that I am poor doesn't mean that I can be cheated on. That woman will never accuse people wrongly in her life again. I made sure I teach her lesson. But Lord, have you forgotten me? When will I be free from these shackles of poverty? I work hard but there's nothing to show for it. Oh Lord, please remember me this year. Remember my family and I this year. It's been long you promised to bless me. Please send me a destiny helper. I'm tired of this kind of life. Good morning boss. You request to see me, sir. How may I help you? Mr. Thompson, first off, check your time. It is almost noon. Why are you just resuming to work today? I am sorry, sir. But something happened today on my way to work. I promise you that such will not repeat itself again. You know I'm tired of condoning these stupid behavior from people like you. Do you want to ruin me just like your life's ruined? You want to drag me to your level? No. I'll never take that. You know that you are the company's driver and you have to transport their goods, but here you are reporting to duty late. It is so obvious that you have another work or you're just lazy to think I was about recommending you. Thank God I didn't make such a huge mistake. You are very lazy, Mr. Thompson. Maybe that's why you still remain poor. What's that look on your face? You want to talk back at me? Please do ungrateful fellow. I take an exception to that Mr. Peter. Just because I work for you here doesn't mean you should be rude to me or disrespect me. I have told you why I came late. Do not let me transfer aggression to you. Why do you like oppressing your staff? You just called me a lazy man and a poor man, that's so bad. When people like you are blessed, 
you tend to be rude to people below you. I will not take that rubbish attitude from you all this year. You can clap for all I care? What do you even have that someone else doesn't? Are you God? You are not. In fact, I'll leave your work today, but before I leave, I'll tell you the peace of my mind. You are a very useless man, you are a fool for that matter. How dare you insult me in the first place? Are you older than me? Who knows I may be other than you. The way I am boiling in sight right now, I may give you dirty slap, fake glasses will fall off your face, stupid and arrogant man. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, it still doesn't change the fact that you smell poverty. You are poor and we are not in the same class. I have been feeding you and your family for almost three years now. If you want to leave, leave now. Arrogant poor man. You will never do this again in your life. Why did you come home so early? I fired myself. I can't take any insult again. Today started on a bad note. Can you imagine that a lady accused me of stealing her wallet at the grocery store down the road, image called me names and I felt so embarrassed. I had to teach her lesson in a very hard way. I spent hours at the police station and I made her apologize to me after she found the wallet in her bag. I was still angry when I got to work and my boss started insulting me again. I couldn't take it but I had to respond to him. I said so many harsh words to him and it resulted into us fighting. I left angrily when he called the securities on me. I just want to be by myself. But, you don't get angry easily, why did you respond to the insults? I know you Thompson, even if someone slaps you, you won't say anything. What a day. I thought of that too, everyone has been so annoying today, and something in me keeps telling me not to enjoy being cheated on. I had to fight back. How do we cope with feeling now that you are jobless? We barely have enough to eat even when you are working, and now, no job again. Allow me breathe Hannah, do not provoke me. Let me think first and stop bombarding me with questions. I am really angry right now. It's okay. I'll allow you. I am just too tired this morning. Thompson, can we have our morning devotion now? We've not been praying in this house for the past four months. Woman, what's the point of praying when God has refused to answer our prayers? We've been like this for many years, yet no changes. God doesn't know me. No point praying to God. I do not believe that Thompson... We need to continue to pray to God. He will surely answer us one day. Then, go and pray by yourself. Count me out. I have been the one working hard to provide for this family ever since you fired yourself several months ago. You've been sleeping and waking up. What's your plan? I'm getting tired already. I'll get job at the right time. We have too much oppressors in our society. Just give me more time. No, Thompson. God Almighty has answered you long ago. You are the one preventing me from blessing you. You don't pray again. You get angry easily. You are lazy. You've refused to work. You are fearful and doubtful. Proverbs 13, 4 says the soul of the lazy man desires, and has nothing but the soul of Thetelagin shall be made rich. The lazy man desires what hard-working people want, all good things of life, but the lazy man's desires remain unsatisfied, while the diligent gain wealth. Thompson, I'll go back to the Most High, since you have refused me access to your life. Bye. It is so true that God doesn't want to bless me. I have started doubting God. Is this how I will die poor? Can't God just send me one big destiny helper? 
the one that will give me so much money and make me leave this bondage of poverty? It seems God cannot send me a helper. I am tired already. I am afraid. I don't trust God again. What do I do? I need to retrace my steps. As we were praying Mr. Thompson, it was revealed to me that your angel of blessing has been moving round with you for a long time, but the devices he met in your hands has made him leave you. I'll explain to you soon, and so many people are in the same situation as you are. Many people complain to God that God did not answer their prayers, whereas, God has sent his angels to answer the prayers, but the devices met in most people's hand will prevent the angels from doing what God has instructed. I hope you know that God doesn't dwell in evil places. There are five signs or devices the devil uses to hinder people from getting blessed. Let's TSLK about them. 1. Anger. In the Bible, anger is often associated with negative consequences and hindrances to receiving blessings. Proverbs 14.29 says, Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. This verse suggests that anger leads to foolishness and lacks understanding, which can hinder blessings. James 1 19 to 20 says my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Here, it's emphasized that human anger does not align with God's desires for righteousness, implying that it can impede blessings. If a science 426-27 says in your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. This passage warns against allowing anger to linger and advises against giving the devil a foothold, suggesting that unresolved anger can obstruct blessings. Overall, the Bible teaches that anger, if not managed properly, can lead to unrighteousness, folly, and hinder God's blessings in one's life. 2. Prayerlessness Prayerlessness, or neglecting regular communication and communion with God through prayer, can hinder one's ability to experience the fullness of blessings that God desires to bestow. Prayerlessness can lead to lack of guidance, Proverbs 3, 5-6 instructs, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is essential for seeking God's guidance and wisdom in decision making. Without prayer, individuals may rely solely on their own understanding, potentially leading to choices that deviate from God's will and blessings. Prayerlessness can lead to missed opportunities for relationship with God. James 4, 8 encourages believers to come near to God and He will come near to you. Prayer is a vital means of drawing near to God and cultivating a deeper relationship with Him. Neglecting prayer deprives individuals of the opportunity to experience intimacy with God and receive the blessings of His presence, comfort, and love. Prayerlessness can hinder forgiveness and healing. In Matthew 6 14 to 15, Jesus teaches about the importance of forgiveness in prayer, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Prayer is a means of seeking forgiveness for our own sins and extending forgiveness to others. Without prayer, individuals may harbor resentment and unforgiveness, hindering the blessings of reconciliation, healing, and spiritual growth. Prayerlessness can reduce strength and renewal Isaiah 40, 31 declares, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. 
they will walk and not be faint. Prayer is a source of strength and renewal for believers. Through prayer, individuals can cast their burdens upon the Lord and find rest for their souls. Matthew 11 28-30 Without prayer, individuals may struggle to find strength and endurance in the face of trials and challenges, hindering the blessings of perseverance and resilience. Prayerlessness can hinder one's blessings by leading to a lack of guidance, missed opportunities for relationship with God, unforgiveness and spiritual stagnation, weakness and weariness, and missed opportunities for intercession and participation in God's kingdom work. By prioritizing prayer and cultivating a consistent prayer life, Individuals can open themselves to the abundant blessings that God desires to pour out upon them. 3. Laziness. Laziness, or slothfulness, is often portrayed negatively in the Bible, as it can hinder one's ability to fulfill their responsibilities, reach their potential, and receive blessings. Laziness can cause missed opportunities. Proverbs 10, 4 states. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Laziness can lead to missed opportunities for growth, success, and prosperity. When we fail to put in the necessary effort and work diligently, we may miss out on the blessings that come from utilizing our talents and resources effectively. Laziness can cause stagnation and poverty. Proverbs 13 4 says, A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Laziness often results in stagnation and a lack of progress. Without consistent effort and hard work, we may find ourselves trapped in a cycle of unfulfilled desires and poverty, hindering the blessings of abundance and fulfillment. Laziness can cause lack of provision. Proverbs 20, 4 warns, Sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time they look but find nothing. Laziness leads to neglecting responsibilities and failing to prepare for the future. Just as a farmer who refuses to plow in the appropriate season will not reap a harvest, those who are lazy may struggle to find provision and sustenance when they need it most inhibiting the blessings of abundance and security. Laziness have negative consequences. Proverbs 24 30-34 provides a vivid illustration of the consequences of laziness through the example of a neglected vineyard. The passage describes how laziness leads to overgrown weeds, crumbling walls, and poverty. Laziness not only hinders blessings but also invites negative consequences and hardship into one's life. Laziness can lead to unfulfilled potential. If a science 5 15 to 16 encourages us to be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Laziness prevents us from making the most of the opportunities and gifts that God has given us. When we fail to steward our time, talents, and resources wisely, we hinder our ability to fulfill our potential and experience the blessings of purpose and fulfillment in life. Laziness can hinder one's blessings by leading to missed opportunities, stagnation, lack of provision, negative consequences and unfulfilled potential. By cultivating diligence, perseverance, and a strong work ethic, we can overcome laziness and open ourselves to the abundant blessings of life. 4. Fear. Fear can hinder one's blessings in various ways, as illustrated throughout the Bible. Fear can lead to lack of trust in God's promises. Fear often stems from a lack of trust in God's promises and sovereignty. In Isaiah 41, 10, God assures us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
When we allow fear to consume us, we doubt God's ability to fulfill his promises, hindering our ability to receive blessings that come from trusting in his provision and protection. Fear can lead to missed opportunities for growth and obedience. Fear can paralyze us and prevent us from stepping out in faith to obey God's commands and fulfill his purposes for our lives. In Joshua 1, 9, God commands Joshua, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. When we allow fear to dictate our actions, we may miss opportunities for growth obedience, and the blessings that come from walking in alignment with God's will. Fear can lead to stagnation and inaction. In Matthew 25, 25-26, Jesus tells the parable of the talents, where a servant buried his talent out of fear. The master rebukes him, saying, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. Fear of failure or inadequacy can lead to stagnation and inaction, hindering the blessings that come from faithful stewardship and investment of our talents and resources. Fear can lead to diminished faith and power. Fear can diminish our faith and rob us of the power and authority that God has given us as his children. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, Paul reminds Timothy, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. When we allow fear to dominate our thoughts and actions, we operate in a spirit of timidity rather than the power and authority that come from walking in faith, hindering the blessings that come from living out our identity as children of God. Fear can put one in bondage and oppression. Fear can lead to bondage and oppression, keeping us enslaved to anxiety, worry, and insecurity. In Psalm 34, 4, the psalmist declares, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. God desires to deliver us from the grip of fear and set us free to experience the abundant life and blessings that he has prepared for us. Fear can hinder one's blessings by undermining trust in God's promises, causing missed opportunities for growth and obedience, leading to stagnation and inaction, diminishing faith and power and subjecting individuals to bondage and oppression. By choosing to trust in God's sovereignty and stepping out in faith, we can overcome fear and open ourselves to the abundant blessings that God desires to pour out upon us. Doubt, like fear, can hinder one's ability to fully experience the blessings that God intends for his people. Throughout the Bible, Doubt is portrayed as a stumbling block to faith and obedience. Doubt leads to lack of faith. Doubt often arises when individuals question God's faithfulness, goodness, or ability to fulfill his promises. In James 1, 6-8, it says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Doubt undermines faith and trust in God, hindering the blessings that come from a confident reliance on His provision and promises. Doubt caused unbelief in God's word. Doubt can lead to skepticism and unbelief in the truth of God's word. In Hebrews 11, 6, it states, and without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Doubt in the authenticity and authority of scripture can hinder one's ability to receive the blessings that come from obedience to God's word and alignment with his will. Doubt caused inaction and missed opportunities. 
Doubt can paralyze individuals and prevent them from stepping out in faith to obey God's commands or pursue His purposes. In Matthew 14.31, Jesus says to Peter, who doubted while walking on water, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Doubt can lead to inaction and missed opportunities for experiencing the blessings that come from faithful obedience and alignment with God's plans. Doubt caused diminished confidence in prayer. Doubt can undermine confidence in prayer and hinder one's ability to receive answers to prayer. In Mark 11:23-24, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Doubt can hinder the blessings that come from confident and expectant prayer. Doubt caused spiritual stagnation. Doubt can lead to spiritual stagnation and hinder growth in relationship with God. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5 Paul exhorts believers to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Doubtful thoughts that contradict God's truth can hinder the blessings that come from spiritual maturity and intimacy with God. In summary, anger, prayerlessness, laziness, doubt and fear hinders blessings, the devil attacked Christians a lot with these devices to enable them lose the blessings coming their way. When a blessing is coming your way, that's when people unknowingly annoy you and so many bad things happen. You need to watch and pray. You need to pray for the mercy of God to step into your case so that the angel of blessing can come down to bless you. Pastor, I'm guilty of all these. There was a day I got angry at everyone, including my wife. I didn't know what came over me. And ever since then, I have become lazy, reluctant to pray, doubtful and fearful. I'll plead for God's mercy. Thank you for this word of God. I'm indeed grateful sir. Heavenly Father, I come before you in humility and reverence, recognizing your sovereignty and your abundant mercy. I acknowledge my need for your grace and your blessings in my life. Please forgive me for any doubts, fears, or shortcomings that have hindered your blessings from flowing freely into my life. I ask for your mercy to cover me, washing away my sins and shortcomings. May your grace be poured out upon me, filling me with your love, peace, and joy. Help me to trust in your goodness and your faithfulness, knowing that you are God who delights in blessing your children. Lord, I invite your blessings into every area of my life my relationships, my work, my health, and my spiritual walk. May your blessings overflow in abundance, meeting every need and fulfilling every longing of my heart according to your perfect will. Grant me the strength and wisdom to walk in obedience to your word, to seek your kingdom above all else, and to live a life that honors you in every way. Help me to be a vessel of your love and grace, sharing your blessings with others and bringing glory to your name. I surrender my fears doubts, and worries to you, trusting that your mercy and grace will sustain me through every trial and hardship. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and your endless blessings. In Jesus' name, Amen. Zadkiel, where are you going? Look at Thompson, praying for God's mercy. The Lord has answered him and he has sent me, Archangel of mercy to him. If the Lord has sent you to him, then I shall accompany you to bless him. He shall be named a man whom God has shown mercy and blessed. Hallelujah to the Most High. Glory be to his holy name. Ah! I have been defeated. Thompson has obtained God's mercy and he has been blessed. I have been put to shame. Thompson started working in a company as the company's driver. He was later promoted after the owner of the company found out that he's well educated. He went on to establish his own company and he also established his wife. 
To God be the glory, Thompson and his family have been greatly blessed by God. Hallelujah.